recipe of the day. I am doing a special episode today because I am going to be making um, some meals to actually give away. We have a very dear friend, um, actually and client, whose mother passed away unexpectedly. So I'm going to be making this meal for them. And we have another dear friend and actually client who um, is going through some medical treatments. And so I want to make something for them. Um, and uh, so I just thought as long as I'm going to be making this yummy recipe that just looks great um, and gluten-free, by the way, then I thought I would bring you guys along. So we are going to be making today a meatball um, and polenta dish. And then I also have a um, cookie a recipe for Easter that I recipe tested over the weekend. And it is so good that I'm going to be making it for you guys, too. So, hey, Erin, Rachel, Heather, how are you guys? Thanks for watching. Welcome. Oh, good. Thank you guys for being here. So I'm going to get started with the polenta first. So I'm going to show you here because I'm going to put it over on the stove. I've got um, onion and fresh Parmesan. Of course, I grated this Parmesan all fresh because, you know, we always grate our own cheese fresh because I don't like the stuff, you know, that they put on it that makes it not stick. It's just, you know, ew. it doesn't turn out right. So this is freshly grated Parmesan that I just grated. Um, and then here I have fresh oregano that I chopped. And I actually would show you guys my hack here because it worked great with oregano. I took my colander, take the, the oregano stem and you stick it through the hole and you pull it out and then all your oregano leaves end up in the bowl. Simple way to de-stem your fresh herbs. So I did that. Um, and so I'm going to get started here with our um, polenta. I'm going to saute the onion with a little garlic and a little fresh oregano. And I've got some ricotta cheese here. Now I'm doubling the recipe because I'm going to be making um, several meals to give away. So I'm ma making more than you probably would make for a normal amount. <laughs> so if you're wondering why I'm making so much, that's why. So here we go. In my, I broke out both the Lake Crusades today, my large and my medium. Um, and I'm going to get started here with some butter to saute the onions here for the polenta. So I just wanted you to see what was on my tray before I got back here and started with the butter. Yum. And I have my pan on all, re all re ready so it was ready to go here. And the onion. Get my butter. Onion. So I got my pan plenty hot. Ready to go. And I'm going to let that get started before I throw the garlic in. You know, garlic very temperamental and likes to burn. So let's just let those onions get going. And then I have my chicken stock back here. I have eight cups of, chi of chicken stock in the pan behind here just getting warm so that uh, we don't have to wait for it to come to a boil while you guys are here. So I'm going to let that get started. And while that is getting started, we're going to start on our meatballs. I'll tell you a funny story. We just had our Berkshire Hathaway convention online because, of course, everything's online. And the um, famous chef, um, I'm going to forget his name, Fabio, Fabio, shoot, I should have writ, uh, writ, uh, written it down. Famous Italian chef has been on, I think he's been on Top Chef and a bunch of shows on Food Net, Network. Someone will have to hashtag me there or I will put it in. Anyway, he did a live stream with us and he made spaghetti and meatballs. So I thought of all the things that he makes, I'm sure that are fabulous, that's what he made. So another reason why I thought this recipe was right apropos. I learned a lot about meatballs. So I am using today um, a pound of turkey, a pound of pork, and then two pounds of beef. So you can see what's in my bowl before I get going here. Now I'm going to take my wedding ring off, and I'll take it off really for anything but meatloaf. <laughs> I'm taking it off here. Okay, so to our, our meat here, I'm going to get going here with what goes in here. Ah, uh, there we go. Now I am not going to put um, breadcrumbs in, uh, in this. I'm going to leave it uh, uh, gluten-free. Now if I wanted to use a gluten-free binder, I could use cornmeal. I could use some oatmeal. Um, but on these, I'm just not going to use any. So I will get started here. I'm going to get started with my um, eggs. I'm going to put four eggs in. Because once we start mushing this... <laughs> Only gonna go mush once once my hands are dirty. Hey, Seal, how are you? Good to see you. And Rachel, how are you? Haven't seen you guys in so long. So that's why I had to do a show so I can see all my people. <laughs> ah, 
awesome. So there's our eggs. And then to that, I'm going to put some garlic too. So fresh garlic that I minced. So we're going to put fresh garlic in our meatballs here. Yummy. And then I have some parsley. Make sure I get everything going in here. So I get talking to you guys and I forget where I am. So I'm going to save a little bit of parsley to garnish with. But this is fresh chopped Italian flat leaf parsley. And then I'm going to put in some cheese. I've got fresh grated Parmesan cheese. And I'm going to put a healthy amount in here. And uh, eggs. That's it. I'm going to put some salt and pepper in. So these are going to be yummy. And another reason I like this recipe is it's really going to be a casserole. So once I get these um, meatballs made, when I actually assemble these, they're going to be in some foil pans, of course, to give away. But then we can put the uh, polenta on the bottom and with the meatballs and some sauce. And they're going to be yummy. Put some cheese on top so that when they reheat it, it's like a casserole. They cook it like the casserole. So yummy is that. Okay, so meatballs. Here we go. I can hear my onions behind me working away. Oh my gosh. Yum! Now you can use the famous Italian chef, if I can think of his name. Um, he only uses beef for meatballs. And he knows, you know, the controversy and all the different things. But he is a beef meatball guy. So I, uh, I usually always, even when I'm making meatloaf, I will use beef and turkey just for calories, frankly. But you um, can use whatever you like. And then, of course, I like to put a little pork in because, you know, everything's better with pork, right? Now, I took this meat out of the fridge at least an hour ago so it would warm up a little bit to room temperature because everything mixes together a little better when it's a little warmer, I think. And my eggs, too, I took them out so they could warm up a little bit. And... Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Garlic, pepper, yum! A little bit of parsley in there for color. Oh my gosh, I gotta check out my onions because I can hear them behind me cooking away. So, oh my gosh, look at that. Yummy. Okay, easy, huh? Hold on, I'm wash my hands real quick. Okay, oh my gosh, it smells so good. Looks great. Get our onions. Our chicken stock is um, boiling away there, so we're ready. Put that in. Okay. Oh my gosh. You can smell this. It smells so good in here. Yeah. Okay, so our onions, I'm going to now add our garlic. There we go. I just have it measured out already. So if I just spill it on the plate, hold on. Get it going in there. Oh my gosh, it smells delicious. Yum! And then I'm gonna put some fresh, some of our fresh oregano in here. Oh, and actually I believe I need fresh oregano in our meatballs too. So hold on, make sure I get everything going. Let's see. Parsley, eggs, cheese, garlic, salt. Nope. So the oregano only goes in our um, polenta. But because I have it in front of me, well, let's put a little dash in. <laughs> okay, this smells yummy. So let me get the garlic mixed around here. Oh my gosh, yum. That's going to give our going to give our polenta um, just a little bit of green fleck in there. So, oh my gosh, it smells so good. Sure it got, and also because I'm using three different types of meat, I can see them. They're different colors and see that I got them kind of all mixed up there. But they look good. Check it out. Yum, meatball. Who doesn't love a meatball? Oh my gosh, it's so weird to wash my hands without my ring on. <laughs> this huge ring. Um, hey Rhonda, how are you? So I've got the polenta going behind me. The onions. I'm going to get the polenta in there. So it can get cooking. And I am using, of 
course, this kind of polenta, this golden pheasant that is so yummy. Now you could use cornmeal too. Um, it'll work too, but I'm using this golden pheasant. So I'm going to take, I have four cups of polenta that I'm going to put in there. So here we go. I'm going to put my spoon down. Oh, here we go. So I've got the onions, the garlic, oregano in here. And so to this, I'm going to sweat it off. I'm going to put four cups of polenta in here. And I'm also going to dump in my chicken stock. So let's see if I can do this gracefully. Okay, my chicken stock is boiling. So, hey, Erin, check it out. I have your mitts you gave me. Simply blessed. So in goes our stock. Oh my gosh, yum. And that is eight cups of boiling chicken stock. And I need a whisk because I don't want any lumps in my polenta. So we are going to whisk this in here. Oh my gosh, it smells so yummy. To show you guys what this looks like. Hold on. Get it mixed in. And the oregano gives it a nice green fleck in there. So let me show you what this looks like. Oh my goodness, yum. And this is going to take a few minutes to cook. Turn that down. But I want to show you here what is going on. I'm going to get my little mitts on, Erin. Okay, look at that. Yummy, bubbly yumminess, huh? It is boiling. You hear it bubbling? So we're going to let that go. And I'm going to start um, with our next, with our sauce for these um, meatballs. So, hold on, this thing is popping away back there. So this pan, I'm going to make some sauce for our meatballs. So to the pan here, I'm going to put three cans of diced tomato. These are low salt diced tomato uh, in the pan. And I'm actually going to put a can of this plain uh, tomato sauce in, just because I want to make sure I have enough sauce, because I'm doubling the recipe. Hey, Susan, how are you? So to our tomatoes there, I'm going to add also some um, olive oil and some basil and some more fresh oregano, which is over here. I knew I had it in something else. It's in the sauce. <laughs> so I'm going to put our rest of our fresh oregano in there. Ah! Whoopsie. Whoopsie. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and I will put a little bit of olive oil. I need to get out here. Oh my gosh, the polenta smells so good. Olive oil measured very carefully, as you can see. <laughs> And then give this a stir. Oh my goodness. Yum. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so yummy. That is getting going there. How is everyone? I have missed you all. Which is why I wanted to do a show and say hi and show you guys this yummy recipe. So this sauce is going to get going because I'm going to put in there the meatballs in this pan to cook. So let's make some meat meatballs. And I've got everything in there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I was going to try. I've got two scoops here. So I have my number 40 cookie scoop that I usually use. I was going to try that size and show you guys. And the reason I use a scoop, A, it's easier, and B, then all your meatballs are the same size so they cook evenly. So that's the key to the scooper. So there is a number 40 size and then I have an ice cream scoop scooper that I thought I would see what size the meatballs should be. So this one is a little larger. What do you guys think? Should we make ice cream meatballs or little meatballs? What, what, what do you think director? Little. Little? Okay. So will you make number 40 meatballs? 
So, while we make meatballs here, how are you guys all doing? Anybody have any special Easter recipes? I have a special show on Thursday. We're going to be doing an Easter dessert on Thursday. And I have a yummy side dish. And of course, I have a signature cocktail for your Easter brunch celebration that will be delicious, something special for the holidays. Yes, Jill said smaller too. Yes, so we're making number 40 size meatballs. Yum. What are you guys doing for Easter? And what are some of your traditional things? I am going to be making my sausage grits that everyone loves. I have made them on the show. I'm going to put these in our sauce behind me. Oh my gosh, I smell that. Um, polenta smells delicious. So to our sauce here, we stir in our oregano. Oh my gosh, yum! And I'm going to put these in here. And these are going to cook in the sauce for about 20 minutes or so. And then I'm going to assemble the casseroles. Well, I'll show you in a sec. Let me get the meatballs in here. Oh my gosh, this sauce is going to be so good when all this meat re uh, renders down. So then once I'm going to cook those in the oven, maybe 20, maybe 30 minutes or so. They might not necessarily be cooked all the way through, because um, but it's going to be a casserole because we're going to cook it uh, again. So when I serve this, my pan, I'm going to take the dish, I'm going to give them a weigh in, put the polenta in the bottom, put the meatballs on top, and then put some sauce on top and some Parmesan cheese on top of that, so that when they cook it in the oven, when they're ready to eat it and cook it for a half hour or so, the meatballs will cook all the way through. So that's how I'm going to serve these. And oh my gosh, don't they smell yummy? Oh, leg of lamb. I know my mom always made le uh, le uh, leg of lamb on Easter. Always. Yummy. You'll have to share your recipe with me for leg of lamb. Oh my goodness. So our polenta here. you the consistency how it's thickened up already to this you know mm. oh my gosh it's so good yummy already yum and I'm gonna finish that polenta with some ricotta cheese a whole carton of ricotta cheese because you know what's not better with more cheese it's all about the cheese right oh my gosh Get the plastic film off so I can use my ricotta cheese. So I'm going to put in, yes, Heather, ricotta cheese going in. And then I have, the recipe actually called for cream. You know, I just can't do cream, so I have half and half. So in goes two cups of ricotta cheese. And then we're going to put some parm. I have a cup of the fresh Parmesan going in. And then I'm going to put a cup of half and half because you can use cream if you want, you can use milk if you want, they will all work fine. But I'm gonna use half and half. Wah! My hands are all slippery from the meatballs. Okay, oh my goodness gracious. Let me show you this, hold on, let me show you. I need an over the stove camera for you guys. Oh my gosh, check this out. Yummy! Here our tomato sauce is girdling away over there. Our tomatoes, oh my goodness gracious, this is unbelievable. Yummy. Okay, so I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to this. Oh my goodness. Yummy. Delicious. What's not good with two cups of ricotta cheese? And half and half. <laughs> Yum, right? Oh my gosh. Salt and pepper. Yes. Yes, chill. Calories don't count on holidays, right? <laughs> oh, I guess this isn't really for a holiday, but it's a holiday week. Can we do that? <laughs> a holiday week. Oh my goodness. This smells delicious. Let me give a bite to my director for my taste test. That off there. 
Oh my goodness, this looks delicious. Stir in the salt there. Oh yes. Okay. I'm going to let him taste that. Here you go. Match cans. See what you think. It's very hot. Yum! I'm going to check my sauce here. So we've got this up to temperature. And I'm going to fill this like I said, I will finish making all these meatballs and put them into the pan um, and then bake it. Like I said, pre-bake it, then I will assemble these with the polenta on the bottom, the meatballs on top, some cheese, and deliver them to my friends who are going through a hard time. I remember how much I appreciated when people brought us meals um, when Rex was born and when my mom died and Gary's mom died. <laughs> Uh, they really appreciated the meals. Then we had another friend bring us a, an amazing meal for Gary's birthday. Brought us everything homemade. The most amazing meal. And I'm telling you, what a gift. So gift ideas. Nobody needs any more stuff. At least in my opinion. Bring them a meal. So that's what I'm doing here. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. Okay, these cookies I tested on the weekend are so good that I am making them for you guys um, so you guys can plan for Easter too. So I'm going to move my meatballs here. Oh, the director says the polenta is delicious too, by the way. Of course, how could it not be? Here's the polenta. So I'm going to move my mixer over here, my Instagrammers, so you can see what's going on here. So in my mixer here, I have um, one stick of unsalted butter. I always use unsalted butter when I am baking or anything. It's all I buy because um, I can salt it myself the way I like it. So to that, I have one cup of white sugar I'm going to put in there and uh, two-thirds of a cup of brown sugar. Of course, it's easy when it's all measured, right? <laughs> Get it all going in. These are so good. These are lemon coconut oatmeal with a surprise. And they're yummy. Hold on. Need power there. There we go. Power. Now I'm using shortening, which I haven't used in forever. But the recipe called for shortening, so I thought, well, let's give it a whirl. I think shortening, like the combo of the, of the butter and the shortening. And I bought the smallest container that I could use because I never use it is this little pot of Crisco. So what else can we make with Crisco? <laughs> I remember my mom always had you know, that big container of Crisco in the pantry growing up. Oh my gosh. So we're going to cream that together. Yum. You have a special cookie recipe that you make for Easter? Or a dessert for that matter. Oh, fried chicken and Crisco. You know, I've never made fried chicken. Maybe we have, I should tackle fried chicken from scratch. Oh my God. Have you, um, anyone tried the new hot chicken sandwich place over at the collection in River Park? It's called Burnin' Mouth. Let me turn this off. Can you hear me? It's called Burnin' Mouth. B U R N I N. Mouth. Yummy, like hot, you know, Nashville chicken sandwiches. They're delicious. Um, and there's always a line, but it's, yum it's yummy. Of course, my son has discovered it, so it's there. Also, Cane's is open now, too, in Oxnard, but the line is forever. That's a chicken nugget place. And frankly, the hot chicken place is delicious, to, you know, in my opinion, better. Okay, so let's see. We'll get going in here. I've got the sugars and the eggs and the, I'm going to put the eggs right here. Eggs. Well, I'm looking for the eggs and telling you the eggs are in. So in the, my dough here, I'm going to put two eggs and mix those in real quick. I this cookie will go really quick because I already have it all measured out. So let's go quick here. Oh my gosh, it all smells so good in here today. Jill, have you made fried chicken? Do you make it from scratch? Have you? Okay. So to this, 
really quick, I want to show you my treats here. We're going to put in the flavor of this is lemon. Now I am using the zest of a lemon and the juice of a lemon that I just juiced, but I see a seed here, so I'm going to take that out of here. So it is going the zest and the juice of a lemon. Of course, a lemon that I grew always makes me so excited. So there is lemon. Now the recipe calls for lemon extract, but I'm using the real thing. And then to that, I'm going to do our flour. So in this, I'm going to do add the soda and the powder. And it's one teaspoon of soda. I'm just going to throw in here. Oh, Lee does it. Awesome. I'm sure he has a secret to his fried chicken. And then a half a teaspoon of powder. Easter show. We're going to be making a yummy dessert and of course a signature cocktail and a side dish. So we will see you Thursday and thank you for watching. We'll see you Wednesday for our real estate show. We're going to be talking again about Proposition 19 because it goes into effect on Thursday which is April Fool's Day. So be sure if you have any questions on Proposition 19, um, DM me, text us and we will answer them on Wednesday's real estate show and Thursday I'll be doing a special cooking show for Easter. So thanks for watching. We love seeing you guys here. And remember, you can always find these on our YouTube channel on Ventura Real Estate. Please uh, go there and subscribe. And we can always find us too on our website, GaryandLisa.com, your real estate edge. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.